Well hello there. So you want to expand your PlayStation 5 solid state drive storage, but you're not sure what SSD to choose. By the end of this video, you'll have a good few SSDs you can choose from, so stick around to the end to see them all. Before we get to that, we'll look at different makes, capacities and prices of SSD models. I'll only include compatible models, so you don't need to worry about compatibility. But why install an SSD expansion in the first place? At the moment, the 667GB we get doesn't go that far, especially if you're a YouTuber. You can move PS5 games to a HDD for storage, so you don't have to delete them, but you can't play them from the HDD, which is pretty pointless in my opinion, as you'll just have to play Tetris moving games around from one drive to another, which isn't that much quicker than deleting and reinstalling games anyway. However, with a compatible SSD, you can store PS5 games on them, play them straight from the SSD, update them from the SSD, and download directly to the SSD. I'll start with smaller and cheaper models and work my way up to better and more expensive SSDs. If you're new here, subscribe not to miss out on the installation guide coming out soon. I'll be doing that when the ports are unlocked in an upcoming PS5 update. That's right, the expansion port isn't actually enabled for us yet. It's actually being beta tested as per the PlayStation website. And the website states not to add an M.2 SSD until the software goes live. And you can't install a new update if you've already put the SSD in early, so don't do that. Now before we get into the SSDs, I'll just go through the requirements outlined by Sony. The interface needs to be PCLE Gen 4x4 M.2 NVMe. The capacity needs to be between 250GB and 4TB. It will need to have a heatsink to dissipate heat. Some SSDs come with one attached, and some you'll have to buy a heatsink separately. It needs to have a sequential read speed of 5500 megabytes or faster. The module width needs to be 22 millimeters, as 25 millimeters is not supported. The form factor needs to be M.2, either 2230, 2242, 2260, 2280, or 22110. The socket type needs to be socket 3, and it needs to fall within the following dimensions. Now I've measured the width of the port and it is 25mm, so you could comfortably fit an SSD with a width of 24mm or less, including the dimensions of the heatsink. Any bigger and you risk the SSD not fitting into the port, which would be a very expensive mistake. Now let's get into some compatible SSDs. Thus far I've only managed to find a handful of SSDs that are compatible, and I've also put some heatsinks in the description if the SSD you choose needs an external heatsink. Now most of these SSDs come in more than one capacity, so you can choose one that fits your budget and space requirements. And number 5, we have the Samsung 980 Pro 500GB SSD. It's £109.99. Now this is a good one if you're looking to not break the bank, but you want some extra space. It will effectively double your storage, but it will need a heatsink. The cheapest heatsink I've found is £11.99, so the total price comes to £112.98. I expect the prices will be proportional in other currencies like the US dollar. Its dimensions are 8.01 cm by 2.21 by 0.24 and it has a read speed of 6,900 MB a second. At number 4 we have the Seagate Farcuda 530 500 GB internal SSD. It's £171.40. This one is credited by Push Square for being compatible. It will also need a heatsink bringing the price up to £183.39. Its dimensions are 8.01 by 2.21 by 0.22 cm and has a read speed of 7000 megabytes per second. At number 3, we have the WD Black SN850 1TB internal gaming SSD. It's £159.98. Now this one will need a heat sink, bringing the price up to £162.97. Its dimensions are 8 by 2.2 by 0.24 centimeters and it has a read speed of 7000 megabyte per second. And number 2, we have the Corsair MP600 Pro 1 terabyte SSD. Now this is also one of the cheaper 1 terabyte SSDs. It has a built-in heatsink. Its dimensions are 2.3 by 8 by 1.5 centimeters and it has a read speed of 6850 megabytes per second. And coming in at number one, the most expensive SSD I've put on the menu, the Gigabyte Aorus Gem 4 7000S 1TB solid state drive. It's £188.73. 
This one comes with a built-in heatsink. Its dimensions are 8.05 by 2.25 by 1.12 centimeters, and has a read speed of 7,000 megabyte per second. There you have it. My top five M.2 SSDs compatible with the PS5. I can't find any word on when we'll have access to the SSD port, but the Seagate Fire Kudo is releasing in August, so I suspect it may coincide with that, but there's no guarantee. I'll do an announcement as soon as there's any word on when we're going to have access to that port, and I'll put it on uh, social media, so follow me to see that. Let me know down in the comments what device you plan on using. I put the links for every featured device in this video in the description, as well as the page on the PlayStation website all about the SSD storage expansion. Remember to like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe not to miss out on uh, future videos. I'll be doing an installation guide as soon as I get mine and as soon as that port is enabled for us non-beta users. And I will see you in my next video. Have a good one.